The Ruger 5.7. Let's check it out. <laughs> The 5.7 by 28 caliber has been used since 1990 in over 40 countries as their military sidearm for their personal defense weapon. Uh, in fact, in 1990, NATO was looking for a replacement of the 9mm and looking for something with more capability. And the 5.7, hands down, addressed a lot of different issues uh, with the FN P90, which is just an iconic firearm. And then we have, of course, the FN 5.7. Uh, and since that time, a number of different companies have come out with firearms that will shoot these uh, 5.7 by 28. It's a very capable round, moving at over 2,000 feet per second and a very small little bullet. Now that Ruger has come out with their 5.7, uh, this is the first time that a major firearms manufacturer, other than FN, that has really introduced a firearm in 5.7. Uh, and to me, it's really created a large resurgence in the interest of the 5.7. Uh, I did find this one at a local gun shop at full retail, and I purchased it because I've really been wanting one for a while. And one thing that really allows me to make purchases like that is Patreon. And I really do appreciate our patron members that are over there. They help us to take care of range upgrades, camera upgrades, uh, you know, SD cards. I mean, it can be very expensive and Patreon is really a big help to us. Well guys, the first thing that I want to say is a big thank you to Ruger for making an affordable 5.7 by 28 pistol. Uh, one of the things that's been the problem with the 5.7 is the price of the firearms. And when you start out comparing this to the FN 5.7, 5.7 runs about $1,200, $1,100. Uh, the Ruger retail, full retail, is $799. So we start out with a fairly reasonably priced firearm. Now, $799 is not cheap, but you know, typically at gun shops, you can find it for a little less market price. Uh, at this time right now in 2021, I paid full price for this pistol. And honestly, I was glad to get it. Now, Ruger didn't send this to me again. I purchased this, and uh, I was glad to do it. In fact, it was at Dewey's here in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, now, let's go ahead and check to make sure the gun's unloaded. We have our magazine release right here. We have a steel 20-round magazine. Uh, that's a departure from the FNs, which are plastic polymer, and you get two of them. Uh, and let's go ahead and check to make sure the gun's unloaded, and we see the chamber's empty. Now, with the metal mags, you're just going to get it a little bit thinner than you are with the standard FN mag, and that's what we have here. Uh, it is a polymer. These seem to work really well. Uh, but definitely it's going to give you a little more ability to thin that grip down. One of the things about the FN is it does have a little bit of a thicker grip. It's still ergonomic. It's still a great grip. But uh, that's just one of the things about using metal mags. But one advantage of the FN is there are some options to have extended mags. I believe this one's a 25 rounder. Uh, this is actually Pro Mag, but they really work. Now with the 5.7, you can see it's pretty long, uh, you know, a little bit longer than typical. And of course you have it neck down. You have a recessed area here uh, for your extractor to gain hold of, uh, but it does make the grip a little thicker. And so that's going to make a little bit of a difference in the reason why this magazine has to be as wide as it is. But honestly, with the Ruger, it fits really well in the hand. Honestly, to me, it's a lot like a 1911. Now there are some features about this that relate to the Ruger Security 9 uh, or their American even, uh, but there is something about the way they have finished this handgun that just makes it look really quality because they're producing sometimes more budget 
price, medium price firearms, sometimes the finish is not quite what it is on others. But the black nitride finish on this slide is excellent. Uh, and the frame. The frame is more toward their Ruger American line, I feel, than their Security 9 series. Uh, which is, is fine, but this is just a little more refined in my opinion. Uh, for one thing, the laser engraving is just excellent and it covers all around the grip. Uh, now what's funny is there is very little recoil with these pistols. So this just gives you a little bit of texturing and it makes it nice in your hand, but it's just a very flat shooting firearm with low recoil. The slide itself is a steel, one piece billet steel slide. Uh, it does have relief cuts right in here. It has a port at the top. And uh, it is a fairly large handgun. I mean, you know, it just is. Now we've done a review on the 5.7. I like it. Uh, I've always kind of considered buying one. Uh, Nate at Gun Zone Deals sent the original for the review, and I sent it back, of course. It was a T&E. I've always just kind of thought I really like the 5.7 caliber. I'd really like to have one. I just never could bring myself to spending $1,200 for the pistol. Again, when Ruger came out, $799, I was like, okay, I've wanted one anyway. That's a great price. I'll take it. Uh, the P90, which is the FN carbine version, which is a phenomenal gun. Again, these have been around for 30 years. This caliber has been around for that long. And so there are a lot of caliber options. I'm going to show you some of the different calibers uh, or different bullet types that we have. And um, it's pretty impressive. Uh, it does have a 5-inch barrel, and it's uh, 4.94 inches. Uh, of course, it is a steel barrel. Uh, it does have drilled and tapped top of the upper slide, and there are plates that you can put on here to be able to accept some sort of red dot if you want to. But it does have fully adjustable steel sights. You're going to need that because of the variations of the different uh, bullet weights of the 5.7 and it does change the point of impact when you go from really low weight bullets to some of the heavier bullets and then we have a fiber optic front it's dovetailed in so you know you can switch this out if you want to but these sights really show up extremely well front and rear cocking serrations we have a five slot picatinny rail on the front and a nice squared off trigger guard it does have a your standard safety it's very minimal and it is ambidextrous more like the 1911 just brings it up bring it down uh, I, I'm not a big fan of frame safeties but on this firearm it's not bad uh, this is a blowback action but if you'll notice right here you'll see this little hammer we're gonna pull this back you'll see the hammer disappears it's pre-cocked one thing I will recommend is to go to the Ruger website and look at the, the internal design of this firearm. It, it's pretty impressive. Uh, with the trigger, uh, you know, it does have your trigger shoe. This is completely different than most of your trigger safeties that I've seen. Uh, it's very well thought out. And we have our slide stop right here. There are some walls that kind of protect it, and then it's kind of hollowed out here. Uh, one thing I will say that if you bring back your slide uh, and with a magazine in it, and you try to disengage, it is tough. I mean, this is not really a slide release, but now if you have a round in there, it's a lot easier to release the, the slide. Uh, and then you have, of course, your takedown lever right here, which we'll take a look at in a minute. But you just have Ruger 5.7, and then here on the other side, Prescott, Arizona, USA. Uh, the barrel, of course, is marked. Now here we have the 5.7x28 compared to a 223 Remington, and then we have just a 22 Magnum. There seems to be a lot of comparison between these two, but honestly there's not really any comparison. Uh, we have Rimfire, which can be a little finicky sometimes with ignition. Uh, it's about 1,880 feet per second coming out of the muzzle. Uh, when you go to the 5.7, we're looking at more like, in fact I got up to 2,175 feet per second. So it's a considerable difference. Then when you get to the 223, which really this is just a baby 223 in a sense, uh, this gets up to about 3,240 feet per second. So it's a pretty significant difference. And a lot of that has to do, of course, with just your case. You've got a lot of powder that you can put in this case compared to your 5.7. 
And here are just a few of the different type bullets that come in the 5.7 caliber. Dragon Fangs, these are just crazy. This is Vanguard Outfitters puts this out. In fact, we've shot quite a bit of this. This thing is just it's just wicked. <laughs> but, you know, you also have your standard, just your full metal jacket, and you have your penetrator here. I believe this is R&R &R, uh, Industries. I think they do this. And then, of course, this is just an FN green tip. Uh, they do make some military penetrators and some that are not even available to the civilian market. This is a solid copper projectile by R&R &R Weapon Systems. Uh, now, one thing about all of this different ammo is right now, guys, 5.7 is very difficult to find. Uh, I did find some. Uh, it was standard FN. It was $2 a round. And so I put two boxes of 50 in the cart, and I looked at the price, <laughs> and I just decided I'd wait. I have, I have some ammo, so I thought I'd wait and just let things roll out. But typically, you know, this can run uh, different prices, of course, with the specialty ammo. But there are reloading options as well because this is a centerfire caliber. Now, one thing about this round or this cartridge is that the case itself is not does not have a parent case. I mean, this was completely designed by FN. And actually, it was designed for NATO trials to replace the 9mm. And it performed extremely well. But over 40 countries, militaries use the 5.7. And that, to me, says a lot about this caliber. But one caliber that I really want to compare with is the Rock Island Armory 22 TCM. We're talking about 2,100 feet per second, about a 40-grain bullet, uh, while the FN comes in at around 27-grain up to 40-grain. And so we've got some clear ballistics gel. We're going to be doing some testing with it. In fact, clear ballistics got in touch with me and said, hey, we want to send you a couple of blocks. And come to find out, they're right here in Greenville, South Carolina. And so I thought we thought both of us were kind of surprised that we were in the same town. And so I'm really looking forward to doing some testing coming up between these two calibers because I'm a real big fan of the 22 TCM and I want to see how it performs against the 5.7. Now let's go ahead and check our trigger pull. And one thing I want to show you is that we do have a flat, more of a flat face top trigger, which I'm a big fan of. But unless you depress the trigger safety, you're not going to get any action here until, again, when you put that full grip, then it disengages the safety. So we have some take up. We have some resistance to there, and then it breaks. A little bit different trigger pull. Uh, it's not really bad because it's really a light trigger pull. Then we have reset, cock it back, right there. So a fairly quick reset. Now we have our Lyman trigger gauge and brown ales. Let's go and check the trigger pull weight. Three pounds, 8.6 ounces. Very nice. Three pounds, 8.2 ounces. Very consistent. Now this is a fairly large handgun. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just show you. We've got about eight and a half inches from the muzzle to the rear, and we've got about five and a half inches from top to bottom. Uh, but it is a very thin handgun, and you can see, I mean, it does have the safeties that come out, but otherwise, very pointable, very shootable, uh, and it is super lightweight. And the weight. One pound, 8.4 ounces. Now we have a couple of different ammunition types. We have the Elite Ammunition, and this is their Penetrator. Uh, we also have their the Vanguard Outfitters, and this is their Black Diamond Fang. <laughs> I'm gonna show you this stuff. It is really wicked looking. And uh, so we'll get another closer look later, but this stuff is pretty serious ammunition. Now, one of the big pluses that we've actually talked about is just the recoil. Uh, the 5.7 has a very light recoil impulse, and yet we have this massive velocity that's coming out. Uh, you know, the caliber itself is definitely unique, and there's no parent caliber. It's something that was designed from the ground up to meet a specific need. 
And so being very low in recoil allows you to get just better accuracy on target. And also it makes it a great self-defense round. One thing about these is they're a little bit larger, but yet the way they shoot, it's just a real pleasure to take to the range. Very flat shooting, it just stays on target. And uh, you know that while that velocity is really coming out and you have somewhat of a fireball, uh, it's definitely a lot of fun. In fact, when Sarah Mac took it out and I said, just shoot it, let me know what you think. nice it's kind of like in between a 22 and a nine millimeter yeah is what i would say <laughs> easy on the hands yes but still you feel like you're like you have something behind it not just pew, pew, pew. right Uh, it was very reliable. We had no malfunctions whatsoever. It's a direct blowback design, and so it's really easy. One thing I do, again, like about the Ruger is the metal magazines over the polymer magazines of the FN57. I feel like they're just going to be more durable. And with 20 rounds at your fingertips, uh, it does allow for a great self-defense option, especially for home defense. Now guys, when it comes to accuracy, uh, the bullet weight will change the point of impact. Uh, when I was doing my accuracy shooting, uh, it was actually shooting a little low. So I aimed at the top of the circle and yet I was hitting point of aim with the FN 40 grain ammunition. While it looks high, this was the point of impact. All right, for disassembly, we're going to drop our magazine, check to make sure the gun is unloaded, and it is. Now let's go ahead and bring our slide back into the slide lock position. Uh, here we have a small little button. This is the other side of your takedown lever. Ruger recommends taking your magazine and taking the, the base plate. Okay, then you'll hear it snap and it'll be a flush fit right here. This will just extend out your slide release. Now here we're going to bring down our slide release and don't go too far with it. Just straight 90 degrees. And then we're going to release the slide but then we're going to bring it forward just a little bit and lift it up. It doesn't come all the way off the frame. Here we have our recoil spring and guide rod. It is captive. Then we have our barrel, which is pretty impressive that it's so thin. But yet the 5.7 is a really thin caliber. And of course, here we have the interior of the slide. Uh, very well done. Very simple. Very simple. And then we have the frame itself. And you can see... Uh, a little more complicated, but uh, real nice beefy slide rails on both sides. The barrel does have sort of a unique lockup system here, and uh, you can just see you have an open bevel. Uh, there's no feed ramp. It's just open all the way around. The barrel is crowned. It's a very small recess, but that will preserve your accuracy. And guys, that's all you need to do to field strip for reassembly. We'll just bring in our barrel, bring in our recoil spring and guide rod. It's a little bit different. The lockup is different on the barrel itself. Some, it kind of locks into the slide. This, there's a little bit of play. Remember that we don't go all the way over our slide. So we come down to where it fits like this. And then we just bring it back. Go ahead and engage your slide stop. Now you take your lever and bring it up, but if it won't quite go into place, what I found is I'll bring back my slide just a touch. And then it does come forward. Then I'll let my slide go, and then you press in your takedown lever, and then that locks it in, and then that brings your button out to the correct position. And we're good to go. One thing I do love about this is it does not have the magazine disconnect. And as far as 5.7, I love it. Uh, there's so many different choices, a lot of different options for ammo. Uh, of course, at this time right now, it is difficult to find any ammo. So, you know, that is one thing to consider. Uh, but also just finding the pistol itself can be a little bit of a challenge. But hopefully in the next few months we'll kind of see things at least go back to normal in some areas of the firearm industry. And I think that Ruger had really knocked it out of the ballpark bringing in a 5.7 for a reasonable price. It's just a handgun and it's great to take out to the range going over 2100 feet per second and just the different varieties of ammunition. 
it just makes for a really excellent firearm. And if you have those shooters in your life that are not accustomed to the recoil, this would give them a really great option uh, for home defense and give them a lot of confidence when they pull that trigger. And again, another big shout out to my Patreon members. These guys are the best and uh, we really do appreciate everything they do. Rubber Dummies is one of the best training tools on the market and you get a 10% discount using Suit00 when you click the link down in the description. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. Yes, it's raining, and yes, I have this umbrella, and it's like dropping drops on me, but you'll get over it. <laughs> Big thing is, we've just got to stay on Utah. So it's a pretty considerate, so it's a comperty, so it's a comperty, it's a comperty. Of course, we've got our Lyman trigger gauge from Brad Ailes. Let's go ahead and check our trigger pull action. There's no, it's not uh, This is going to be, no, that's wrong. Let's see how many rounds we have left. The barrel does have sort of a unique lockup system at the bay. <laughs> so I get whopped in the face with rain. You know, it's raining, so I put up this little umbrella that fits to my tripod. Um, I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> <Wee>. <laughs>